we've come to another special part of today's commencement. On the recommendation of the California State University Board of Trustees, Stuart Quo has been selected to receive an honorary doctorate of law. Stuart, would you join me up here, please? The citation that we have devoted to Stuart reads as follows. Stuart Quo is an unwavering champion for educational equity, social justice, and civic engagement. He has dedicated his professional career to building multi-ethnic and multi-racial coalitions and advocating on behalf of historically underrepresented and underserved communities. In 1983, Mr. Quo co-founded Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles, AAAJLA, the largest legal and civil rights organization for Asian Americans and Asian Pacific Islanders in the United States. Under Mr. Quo's leadership, this organization successfully challenged racially discriminatory employment practices and unfair immigration laws. The organization has also pushed for stronger protections for low-wage workers, immigrants, and victims of hate crimes. Mr. Quo founded AAAJLA's Leadership Development in Inter-Ethnic Relations Program, which has trained more than 1,000 community leaders in collaboration with African American, Latino, Asian Pacific Islander, and LGBTQ communities. <laughs> Mr. Quo's Mr. Quo's community coalition efforts have also focused on improving higher education opportunities. In 2015, AAAJLA launched College for All, a multiracial cross-sector coalition that has championed reinvestment in public higher education to promote greater access, affordability, and equity. The coalition's efforts have been endorsed by more than 40 organizations, including the California State Student Association and many others. Mr. Quo was raised in Los Angeles and earned a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from UCLA and a Juris Doctorate from the UCLA School of Law. He serves as a lecturer at UCLA where he teaches a course called Asian Americans and Law. Mr. Quo has been honored with numerous awards in recognition of his public service, including a prestigious MacArthur Foundation Fellowship, a Liberty Hill Foundation Changemaker Award, and a Civic Medal of Honor from the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce. He was named Lawyer of the Year by California Lawyer Magazine and received an Alumnus of the Year for Public and Community Service Award from the UCLA School of Law. In recognition of his distinguished career, his role as an advocate for social justice, and his contributions to fostering community collaboration, the Board of Trustees of the California State University and California State University, Los Angeles, are proud to confer upon Stuart Quo an honorary doctor of laws. Thank you. I'm going to confer it now. I've got it. So, by the authority vested in me, I confer upon Stuart Quo our highest honor, the degree of doctor of laws with all of the rights, privileges, and honors pertaining thereto. It is an ancient custom, as many of you know today, to invest those who receive academic degrees with hoods that designate the degree that's bestowed. We present this hood to Stuart Quo. Stand between us. You could bend a little. All right. Thank it's you. all yours. Thank you. Wow, that was great. Um, thank you, President Bill Covino 
and the Board of Trustees and the staff and faculty here at Cal State LA. Um, it's great to have my last name pronounced correctly. Uh, how many of you had, have had your first name or last name mispronounced during your lifetimes? Uh, my favorite story was, um, you know, I go around the country and people mispronounce my name even though it's only four letters. Uh, I had a friend at United Way and I called her and she wasn't there. But when she came back, she said, uh, she called me and she said, well, you won't guess how your last name was pronounced this time, Stuart. And I said, okay, Linda, tell me. And she said, well, my, when I got back to my office, my secretary came running into my office and said, you've got to return this call. It's from Mr. Stewart of radio station KWOH. <laughs> uh, true story. Um, but I am really happy to be here today. Um, you know, may have noticed I have a UCLA background, but I'm very, very proud that in 2014, my son Nathan, who is sitting back here, graduated from Cal State LA. And uh, my wonderful wife Pat is there and our friend Linda, but I would say I really want to thank President Bill Cavino for not kicking out my son because he was here for many, many years. <laughs> many years. Um, now, as you graduate from this wonderful institution, uh, you could look forward to a job. You could look forward to getting health care. By the way, Covered California has some wonderful plans that uh, they asked me to tell you about. <laughs> but additionally, uh, we have to answer a question posed by Martin Luther King. He said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? What are you doing for others? We took up that call in 2016. Uh, Bill mentioned it. We promoted, we designed and promoted a bill called Senate Bill 1050. Uh, if passed, that bill would provide $240 million for college readiness, college access and retention, uh, including for the Cal States. And I'm very pleased to say SB 1050 did pass. And we're implementing this bill today. But I told Bill earlier that our goal this year is to introduce a bill that just focuses on Cal States to provide more openings for qualified students to come into these wonderful institutions. Asian Americans Advancing Justice has long focused on immigrants' rights. And we, we have done that, and we all have personal stories to tell about why we reinforce that focus every year. For me, earlier in my career, I remember I went to uh, the South uh, working on a civil rights case, and a white waitress was serving me and said, and started staring at me and said, well, where are you from? Where's your family from? And I thought of my mother's side of the family and I said, well, my great-grandfather was a miner in New Mexico. My grandfather was a tailor and herbalist in Stockton and Oakland. Uh, my mom was born in Oakland, California. And she stopped me without any hesitation and said, and how do you like your new country? And for those of us who are fourth generation or fifth generation, we know many of us will be treated as immigrants, so we will always be immigrants in many people's eyes. But our, but our most memorable case was in 1995. It happened on a Sunday afternoon. A friend of mine who was a neighbor called me and said, well, you have to get some Thai translators because we're going to go on a labor investigation and the people there speak Thai. And so we called the Thai Community Development Center. We had a young attorney named Julie Sue, and she went on the raid. And she called me and she said, you wouldn't guess what they found in Almonte. They found over 80 
women of four guys locked up, some for over seven years, slaving away, making maybe what you're wearing today. And so we uh, bailed them out. Uh, we asked uh, a researcher, could you tell us how to handle this case? Uh, because we hadn't had a big case like that before. And the researcher came back and said, don't take that case. And we scratched our heads and we said, but we know slavery is illegal even in Los Angeles, California. And so we said, why? And they said, well, the liability laws are not clear, so you'll sue and win against the contractors, but you'll lose against the big retailers and manufacturers. Then they said, well, these workers came in, but they're all illegal. So you'll be representing people in Thailand or somewhere in Asia. Uh, do you have an office there? And we said no. And then they found out that uh, the front shop had about 22 Latino workers. And the Latino workers came to us and said, represent us too. And the researcher said, don't represent the Latino workers because they don't speak the same language. They weren't in the same place. They were in the front shop in downtown Los Angeles, but they weren't locked up like the Thai workers. Well, uh, guess what? We decided to keep hope alive, so we didn't ignored what the researchers said. And, I, and we fought the case. We won two motions to dismiss. I'm very pleased to say we won over four and a half million dollars for the workers. We got because the workers said that they would testify against the contractor, we got legal status for all the workers who are now U.S. citizens. And most importantly, the Latino and Thai workers came together, united, and inspired the state legislature to pass the strongest anti-sweatshop law in the United States of America. To this day, our work on human trafficking continues. There are many other groups that fight every day for immigrants' rights and justice in our communities. Martin Luther King advised us all. He said, every person must decide whether he or she will work, walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. So I ask you today, join our causes, keep hope alive, join us to lift up the spirit of immigrants, and help us fight for justice for all. Thank you very much.